didn't host gaming news weekly last week on sunday and there was quite a bit of topics that i wanted to talk about that i didn't and this is one of them so in light of the activision blizzard deal with microsoft and activision the buyout the big one there's a lot of eyes and opinions in the game of the acquisition of activision and the the monopoly being built around microsoft which looking at it there's no monopoly there with microsoft they're still number three even after the deal is done they're number three but microsoft is trying to make it as smooth as possible for them to look like the friendliest platform in the market so they're changing a lot of regulations they're saying a lot of things in the media to try to get the the legislators and all the antitrust people to be like hey they might not be so bad and it's crazy how much defense they have to play to acquire activision blizzard when there's been acquisitions a lot none as big as this of course none none of them as big as this no one as big as call of duty but it's still they're changing like microsoft changing so many policies that other companies still have in like in store just so this deal doesn't get killed by by the legislators and shit and i mean it it shows that microsoft willing to legit pay for what they want it, either it's pay by losing money in the short term to get money in the long term or is paying with just the face card of microsoft and doing these things that need to be done in the industry so then more people would have to change and that's what this article is about by jordan and like i've read it i've read it. i wanted to talk about it on sunday but i didn't um microsoft changed a lot of shit first with the app store they changed a lot of their, they are going to be changing a lot of things with their app store so then people that have different ways of paying for shit in apps Microsoft won't take a cut of that no more. They're like, y'all can have y'all money, bro, if that's how y'all want to be doing things. They're opening up the App Store. So then, in the future, more stores would have to open up the same way because legislators will look like, hey, these stores are really good for the market, for the consumers, for the people that are making the apps. And y'all store isn't. Why is that? So Microsoft's trying to shift the fucking vision to everybody else, to Google, to Apple, to Amazon, to all of them, people that are doing shady shit, Marcus is trying to get the fucking limelight off of them now. So they're changing their app store. They're changing how much they take from game creators to publish on their store. So at first it was like 30% of like revenue went to Microsoft for selling your game on their store. Now they're down to like, 12 or 14 percent something like that something around the the same way as like epic game store you know epic don't need the fucking money so everybody goes to epic game store because it's they get more money in return for launching their game there than on steam microsoft pulling the same shit with the windows store so if you want to publish your game on a windows store now they only take 12 percent and not 30 percent is making the store look even better for creators going forward with the platform Regulators are looking at these things like, all right, Microsoft's really looking friendly over there for both consumers and for creators in this space. Gaming is looking good on the Microsoft platform. And then comes the Activision deal itself. They've been talking about Call of Duty and how one of Call of Duty's biggest fucking incomes is PlayStation with like 18% or something like that of revenue coming from the PlayStation platform alone. 17% of it is coming from PlayStation. I mean, that's a lot of fucking money coming from just PlayStation from Call of Duty, bro. And Microsoft was like, hey, we have Call of Duty now. We want this to stay on PlayStation. Is anything holding it back from staying on PlayStation? Who knows? Nothing but Microsoft's word and probably some policies that Sony has in store, which Microsoft's been changing a lot of those store policies. So I wonder if they're trying to be like, hey, Sony, change your fucking store policies and we'll give you Call of Duty on that type shit, or they just give Sony Call of Duty to be like, hey, look, gaming media, we're the friendliest out here. 
we have all these big ass IPs that we're sharing with the competition. Look how we're looking. Now, how is that going to get Sony more exclusive content? If Microsoft sharing all of theirs and everybody looking at Sony like, why are you holding everything back? Making them look like the bad guy. It could be a lot of plays on a lot of things that's going on here. But all we see right now from a fucking phase value is Microsoft just changed a lot of shady shit that they had to make everything look better for them and look bad for everyone else. Just so this deal doesn't get killed by the legislators, which is a good thing. It's a good thing for everybody outside of Microsoft, of course. But Microsoft probably going to lose a lot of money doing all this shit. But they really want this deal. They really want this deal done. And they're doing anything they can to get it. I know there was a lot of talk about Xbox fans and how they were just doing all kind of crazy shit on Twitter. Talking about like, oh, they failed for paying $70 billion to be multi-platforming. It's bigger than this. It's, it's, a, it's been a lot bigger than this for a long time. Microsoft ain't cared about console exclusive content for a while. Yeah, they started making more of it because they know their console market needed something to keep them on the console or at least keep them in the ecosystem that they were building. Call of Duty is not one of those things. Just like Minecraft is not one of those things. Like, <laughs> there's plenty, there's plenty of examples of games that are not those things that keep you on Xbox. Halo keeps you on Xbox. Halo is what kept people on Xbox. When Call of Duty was still doing Call of Duty's thing, Halo kept people on Xbox. You still play Call of Duty when Halo was out. You're still playing Call of Duty when Halo's out. But Halo is what kept people on Call of, I mean, on Xbox, not fucking Call of Duty. So for them to share Call of Duty still, they keep that 17% from fucking PlayStation. And PlayStation probably just pays themselves back. Because you know Sony's store, I forget how much they take to publish a game on their store. You know, they they charging people all outrageous amounts of money with them being market leader and shit like that. Sony could just take a cut of that back. So if they're charging 30% of whatever Call of Duty makes on their store to keep it on their store, all right, just give us 10% of all the fucking revenue from PlayStation then. And you keep the other fucking seven. And that works. They still get all the money from PlayStation. And then they still get the bolster game pass with fucking Call of Duty, bro. So while people paying 70, 80, 90 dollars for Call of Duty and battle passes and, and microtransactions just like that, you get the game day one on Game Pass with probably double XP every fucking day for life because you got that shit in Game Pass. You got that shit on Xbox. There's so much shit that you, they can do with the Activision thing that is exclusive content that is not taken away from what PlayStation already has, especially after the contracts are done. Because Sony has plenty of double XP contracts, plenty of exclusive content contracts inside of Call of Duty right now. For the next three Call of Duties, I think they said. But after that, Microsoft's like, all right, yeah, I can still get Call of Duty, but all that exclusive shit is coming to Xbox now. And it's going to work. It's going to work. People can be mad about this. That's fine. But, like, nobody's really... Pressing Microsoft to make Call of Duty exclusive is so strange that they want that, especially when Halo is the Microsoft thing. Halo is the Microsoft thing, so why make Call of Duty that when Halo is already there, bro? It's still popping. And Sony doesn't have a first person shooter yet. They had some, they all failed. Hopefully, they can make another one because Call of Duty is legit. PlayStation banks on Call of Duty every year. That's why they put so much deals in with Activision. Because PlayStation needed Call of Duty more than Microsoft did. Because Microsoft had fucking Halo. So now, they have to. Sony has to play the Microsoft game with Call of Duty. Can Sony still buy exclusive deals for Call of Duty from Microsoft? Of course they can. But that money is just fueling fucking Game Pass content. It's going to be strange though. But they're doing everything they can to get this deal to go through. They might even announce more fucking multi-platform games to come from it. Who knows? But uh, Microsoft playing the good guy in this. The 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 angel. The saint of the gaming industry right now. And I mean, hopefully it works for them. So let me know what y'all think about this down below. Do y'all think Microsoft should have just slammed all this shit down? Shut all the fucking doors to everybody. It was like, hey, this is Microsoft content now. Fuck with the fuck with the regulators are saying, or should they be playing to appeal them? 
to appease them, to make Microsoft look like the golden child of gaming so future deals doesn't fall through. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of politics, a lot of politics we don't really know about, especially on surface level. There's a lot of deeper things that's going on here, bigger things that are going on here with, than just gaming, than just consoles, and a lot of stuff we don't know. So let me know what y'all think about it down below. Thank y'all for watching. Like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see y'all in the next video.